Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while I didn't make any video. Today, the video is going to involve this Canon Defender HD10 along with the uh, homemade snow plow. I made that plow four years ago, so it's been through the fourth season now, flawlessly, uh, working very good. Still the original paint. I'm amazed on how this paint holds up. And I do cover a lot of acreage uh, moving snow. Uh, the driveway up to the garage here is about 1200 feet and each and every time I have let's say a landing where I have the vehicle that can turn around it's pretty much like a, a 50 by 100 feet uh, area that I have to clear snow so that's quite a good amount of snow to be removed not taking into consideration that sometimes I do use the plow to open the tails in the woods so it's miles there that I need to open. I'm going to show you how this machine sits now that I have the plow sitting up in the air and it's not ideal and then one down uh, side of it is traction on the uh, back side of it. I'll show you that. Sorry about the noise, there's the uh, heat furnace there, glycol, wood furnace, so within an hour it's going to be very warm in there. That plow is maybe 200 pounds there, sitting up in the air, that puts a lot of weight in the front of the machine, no big deal, it can hold it uh, very well. It sits a little bit low to my liking there. Sometimes whenever I'm going up a snowbank, there's a risk I'm getting hung up there. But that's not the problem there. That's what we see. Where the problem happens is that that end get lighter weight and then it's going up and then whenever I try to reverse, I'm losing traction on these uh, tires. So that you understand how much this gets lightweight. No, I'm go not going to lift it, but you can see there's, I mean, you see that there's missing weight on the back. So my goal today is to add some kind of a bracket here so I can do and add a pass here. Off camera, I prepared a few pieces. So I have a two by two part of an inch. And by the way, the support, I'm not targeting to be uh, it lightweight. As much weight I can put also on the support is going to help me to uh, achieve my goal. Uh, as you can see, I also have five eighth uh, pin. That's regular hitch pin. Um, square tubing like for hitch. Um, I'm going to weld that on the tail of the snow plow at the back. I'll show you that later so I can remove it when needed. And also, on my case, when I'm uh, using the offset flail mower, that's uh, quite heavy equipment. And then when I have to reach one side, uh, it's not tippy, but you know, each and every time I'm mowing along the side of a ditch. I like it to be a little bit more uh, heavy on the front. So I'm building this weight system to be also mounting on the case. So I'm going to have uh, exactly the same thing being welded in the front of the machine. So I can put the holder for that, all the weights. So here, another sleeve like that, two by two tubing. 
that's uh, I think four and a half. That's odd size. It's uh, coming from Europe. As for those parts, they came along with a machine at uh, one side where I work. We had the machine set on those uh, uh, profiles. And along with those rollers, that is uh, three inches in diameter, maybe I would say 10, 12 inches long. That's full, heavy. It was mounted with those uh, angle iron and basically it served as rollers. So anyways, I'm going to have those holes to be able to be dismantled from the support. Reason being, that's going to weigh uh, around 200 to 50 pounds. So I'm not going to lift this by, uh, by myself. And that snow plow comes off regularly from the side by side. So I need to be able to remove those easily without much strain. So I did punch holes, pretty much the same diameter as the pin that uh, puts used from that roller. I have both the same exact pattern. And the idea for that is that I'm going to have this as the base and I'm going to be able to add a weight. One second. Like so. So that's on. I'm going to put six holes. And this is going to cap the whole thing. Like so. So that tube is going to be going on the back. This is going to slide around that tube and also being welded on this one. So that tube is going to be mounted on the machine and so it's going to be much lower than that. And I'm going to have this to slide along with that. So it's going to go up and down like this. And I'm going to pin that. So all the weight are going to be locked. I don't want any weight to fall down because uh, if I hit that with the machine, it's going to be ugly. So I'm pretty much ready for welding now. We are at the back of the machine now. Uh, that's a special hook, a hitch actually I did to hook with that tongue and along with that pole that goes back to the, the front of the machine. At some point there's some uh, gusset straightening that and uh, reinforcing that. Now uh, I want to hook the weight on this part. Here shall be just fine. I need to make sure that it's going to be very strong like this and this. I have that tube on with that plate and the other tube. Uh, I think I can weld on this side so it's going to be giving me some strength like this. And like this I can weld all around the tube. So it should be uh, working fine for what I need. Time to try this. I fully welded each and every pieces, cleaned them. Okay, I'm uh, left to put a pin here. I have to 
be careful not to uh, pinch my finger in between the two. That could be uh, uh, quite bad. And by the way, that's a note to myself. So that might not be that visible on the camera, but the back is way lower now. I'll have to weigh this to know how much this overall may weigh. I'm assuming 250, maybe 300 pounds. And don't worry about the hitch, it's uh, quite capable of uh, a good amount of pounds. Whoa, in California, cargo is 600 pounds and other countries like Canada a thousand pounds so no big deal about the tongue weight and also that weight is kind of distributed along the uh, that pole and all the pole is uh, stuck against the uh, uh, bottom of the uh, side by side it's pretty much flat by the way underneath that machine so except for pulling down exactly here where the there's the ball it's not going to uh, twist the back of it and this is what it looks like underneath so yep So I feel the front is a little bit higher than it used to be. Might be we can take measures. Uh, but my goal was not because of the squat. Let's say it was doing. It was the problem was having the hair being lightweight. Now I see visually that it's getting some weight on it, of course. And voila.